Um, my name is Ashish Yajnik. I run the product management team at Teradata. Very happy and excited to share some of the modernization journey that Teradata's customers are taking around data and analytics as they migrate to cloud and then modernize their stack and they get the maximum value with AWS and Teradata partnership. Uh, Peter is going to talk about, the, he's from Charter Communication, he's going to talk about his own journey that Charter took in modernizing their stack as they journeyed from on-prem to cloud. And he'll double click on the details of that migration journey so that all the challenges that he went through, all the capabilities that he went through in doing that migration process, that'll become much more clear to us. And then finally, we'll have uh, Doug from AWS join in and talk about the architecture that jointly Teradata and AWS have put together to modernize the stack for our customers. So I'll start out with talking about some of the data and analytics modernization requirements, and then we'll go dig deeper into each aspect. First of all, there is significant cost and agility and data challenges that typically prevent organization from accelerating those digital transformation. If today, when we take a step back and look through all the data and analytics projects that we are doing, it is for that sole purpose of driving agility, for driving the change in our operating model in various organizations. And if you look at the types of challenges that we are facing in that organization, it's about 35% of the data leaders have a clear mandate to spend more and more time on analytics, but they are unable to do that because they're spending, spending more and more time around data management, on unlocking the data, collecting and gathering the data, connectivity to the data. That's a big challenge. Secondly, about 75% of them don't have end-to-end -end data management strategy. They may get to do one piece very well, like data connectivity and getting comprehensive data access, but they don't know the context or the meaning behind the data. They're not able to curate the data for the data science teams to go and logically piece out all the data together for that analytics journey. 65% of predictive models are never implemented in production. There's a lot of operationalization challenges, data movement, replication, duplication challenges around data that our customers are struggling with. 79% use more than 100 different data sources, organizing them, connecting them, and not necessarily centralizing all of them is key to the story. Having an ability to do data federation, query federation across multiple different data sources is extremely important for the success of data analytics projects. And lastly, greater than 70% of the enterprises run mixed workloads. On your analytics system, on your, on your data warehouse, your data lake system, there is no one-size-fits-all workload that runs. Some workloads need more I.O., some more need CPU and memory. And so managing that scale and managing that balance of I.O. and memory and CPU needs extremely crucial for our customers as they journey from on-prem to cloud. So keeping those challenges in mind, Technical challenges. Now, Terada espouses three main pillars of modernization. Number one is modern cloud architecture. That's around agility. The main driver for moving to cloud on AWS is around agility. It is the ease of how quickly you spin things up in for test dev environments, for your fire drill, for your ad hoc exploratory workloads, work on those clouds, pay by the drip, pull your data down and walk away. And then you can take that environment into production if that project or that experimentation succeeds. That agility in the cloud is the main driver for why you need to move to cloud. Self-service, another important element of that cloud. We know that a lot of self-service BI analysts, data scientists need the autonomy. Autonomy of where they can go and provision their own sandbox. They can, exp they can logically piece together the data understand the context, they can run through the journey of building and training the model, scoring the model, and eventually operationalization of that model in production. That cell service with less to no IT intervention is extremely important for them. But lastly, we cannot compromise on that multidimensional scalability. That performance, the TCO, the ROI, is extremely important in the world of cloud. You, all of that, those three elements, have to be present in your modern cloud architecture or your infrastructure that you build for your data and analytics. The second step is around the data, unlocking that data. 
it starts off with having that more comprehensive data management, comprehensive connectivity, going from batch all the way to streaming so that you can do more near real-time or real-time analytics and data ingestion. It's around data collaboration, sharing, understanding the context behind that data. It's easily search, share, and explore the data. So you can make it much more reusable for any other data scientist who eventually comes along and doesn't have to start from scratch. So that modernization journey, that architecture is extremely important to modernize your data. And lastly, infrastructure is good, data is ex excellent, but what you do with that matters. And it's those business outcomes that you drive with analytics that eventually matters the most. It's the seamless journey of the data scientist from curating that data, making sure that all the outliers and missing values are taken care of, data is labeled accurately, and going through the journey of building, training, scoring, and operationalizing that model at scale, extremely important for modernization. And so those are the three key recipes or pillars of strategy that we pursue. So number one, on the modern cloud architecture, Teradata recently introduced Vantage Cloud Lake Edition into the market. It is, a, it is a cloud native stack with help of AWS that we built that truly separates out the storage and compute. And the key, some, there are some key architecture principles that define the new modern cloud architecture that Teradata runs on. First of all, it's centralized around the central object store, or the S3. And Teradata has built its own file system to hyper-optimize the performance and availability of the data that sits on the object store. But there is no one-size-fits-all data that you have. Some data requires much lower response times. So marrying the world of SSDs and object store is extremely important for those mission-critical performance. And so with Teradata's integration into EBS volumes and with a file system on that, and a file system on an object store, Teradata can place the data, depending upon the hotness of that data, on the right type of storage and make sure that you get the right performance metrics and also the right cost and availability metrics on an object store. Secondly, it's about multi-cluster compute with elasticity. It is that ability for you to set your thresholds to 80% or 90%, and as soon as you reach those thresholds, ability for that cluster to automatically grow into two node, four node, or six node additional clusters, and then eventually bring that down as your workload reduces. But you don't have to worry about infrastructure spin up and spin downs. All that in the multi-cluster environment happens automatically. Thirdly, it's about business autonomy. It's for the ability for the data scientist and for the cell service BI analyst to log in into the Vantage console, spin up their sandboxes, get to their data, and get to the analytics faster. That business autonomy is extremely important. Optimize pricing and governance around that. Extremely important that you have a nice drill down into which of the department's users' queries are consuming what units of price so that you can put some policies and governance around that so you don't have runaway costs in your environment. There's also a flexibility of price points where for fixed workloads, you have a subscription or a fixed capacity price points, whereas for more ad hoc exploratory workloads, you have an ability to only pay for when you use the environment, on and off model. So that consumption pricing, along with subscription pricing, truly delivers the TCO and ROI that you're looking for. And lastly, it's an open and connected ecosystem with lots of AWS services integration, so that Teradata is an important element in your greater AWS data and analytics strategy. To that end, we introduced Vantage Cloud Lake Edition that marries all those principles that I just talked about. It has a self-service console that's hosted on AWS. It's a web-based query editor, so you don't have to, you, you can bring your own IDE, but you can also use the query editor that comes with it. And with that comes the ability for instantiating your own EC2 instances through that console. Within a couple of seconds to minute, you'll be able to instantiate a sandbox, small, medium, large, depending upon your workload, with little to no IT intervention, no tickets required. Through that, you'll be able to make sure that the data is rightfully connected to the right buckets of S3. If your data needs larger performance, Teradata will automatically move that to an EBS volumes. 
and make sure that you get the low response times that you need. There is a true storage in compute separation. What does that mean? It's a buzzword out there, but what it really means is that when your infrastructure goes down, you don't feel the impact of that. Teradata automatically recovers from failures behind the scenes. You've got spare nodes in the cluster that completely take over, and you don't get to realize the failures. If you read 80, 90% thresholds with a storage compute separation, you'll be able to grow your cluster, and then you'll be able to shrink that cluster down, and you won't even have to do anything with it because it's delivered as a SaaS offer to you. And lastly, I talked about the object file system on S3. This combination of object and SSDs is the principal reason why you can run multiple workloads on the same mega cluster with multi-clusters to do more physical isolation so that you don't compromise on the production critical workloads while your ad hoc exploratory workload is accessing the same data. So this storage compute separation, multi-cluster with object stores and SSDs truly gives the power of agility and autonomy to the end user, but does not compromise on the performance, availability, security, and reliability that we all love in the product. Now, this stack is very natively integrated into the AWS services. Whether it is the SaaS connectors that we've built with Query Grid, so ability to stream or batch your SaaS application's data into Vantage with the right set of connectors that we've built for Query Grid, or it is the integration of AWS S3 so that you can get CSV, Parquet, JSON type of a data onto Vantage seamlessly through a data lake integration. Now, one of the important things about Teradata is this whole notion of centralization versus federation. There's a big argument in the industry around that. Should we centralize all data into a data lake? And that's a great paradigm. But for many of our customers, a combination of federation and centralization works the best, especially when they're experimenting on some certain data sets. They're not sure whether the data sets will be usable or useful, and they don't need to do the whole data loading into a centralized data lake. Keep the data where it is. With Query Grid, you will have an ability to integrate into that data. A prime example of that is integration with Amazon's EMR. Amazon's EMR is the Hadoop service or Hadoop equivalent service that Amazon runs. And with Query Grid's integration into that, it uses the native compute of EMR to do the bulk processing and only bring the results back into Vantage and join it with the Vantage data. So Query Grid's Query Federation capability is very central to the integration that we've built with AWS. Now, Teradata's classic database engine was used, was used more predominantly for BI reporting and dashboarding type of applications. But since then, we have seen the lines have blurred between classic data warehousing and analytics. So inside the database now, you have a bunch of analytics functions that really help you clean up the data, prep the data, and modernize your analytics journey by giving you an ability to build, train, score, and operationalize the model all on Vantage without dragging the data out of Vantage and creating Wild Wild West. And that is very central to the Teradata strategy of making sure that all the workloads come and get centralized. You get the workload management and optimizer capabilities to hyper-optimize the performance and TCO and ROI of that environment. As I mentioned, Query Grid allows you to bring the world of on-prem and AWS together very, very well. If you have some data sources sitting in an on-prem world and you've not brought them into the world of AWS, while your Teradata Vantage sits on AWS, you can initiate a query on Vantage on AWS or on on-prem. And if the data sits across the cloud boundaries, it will be able to satisfy that query and minimize the cost of egress because it only brings the results back. This hybrid cloud connectivity with Query Grid is one of the biggest differentiators, but it helps modernize the stack by making sure that not all the data needs to be centralized. Some data can be in a hybrid multi-cloud environment. 
As part of the unlocking of the data management that we talked about, an important element of that is search, share, and explore. Imagine this journey that a data scientist or a cell service BI analyst takes on. When he instantiates the sandbox, he's provisioned his environment, he's in the Vantage console. Through that, he would like to go in and look at all the data assets that are attached to the, that particular environment. And through our integration with AWS Glue Catalog and other third-party catalogs, the customers can crawl through all the data that is attached to that system, can access the data that is not attached to the system by requesting access. But if the data does not reside inside the boundaries of that particular organization, it can also go to AWS data exchange marketplaces and look for more open source data or third party data and browse and drag and drop the data back into their own organization in a much more secure fashion and pay for it. That is the true open and connected data sharing model that we really espouse. And through the integrations with AWS services, we'll be able to deliver the data sharing capabilities. So you can share and search, browse and select, and drag and drop that data into your sandbox, use it, and then once your experimentation is done, you can delete and walk away. That's agility in data management that is very important for our self-service BI users as well as data analysts and developers. The third pillar of the modernization is around open and connected analytics at scale. It is that journey of the data scientist that starts off with working on a set of data and curating the data. It is that harmony that is between the data engineers and the data scientists that is needed in order to optimize that data, take out the missing values, fill it with this right set of relevant data sets, throw out the outliers, all the machine learning analytics functions for curating and prepping the data is built inside the database. So when you instantiate a new sandbox or a new mini cluster in a Vantage Cloud Lake environment, it comes preloaded with these machine learning analytics functions. With the data that we talked about, which is already there, you can now start to curate that data and start to do more feature engineering on top of that with the functions already available inside the database. Once you've done that, then your journey starts on model building, training, and scoring with a set of statistical hypothesis uh, functions, GLM clustering, temporal, time series functions. You can start to do more model building, training, and scoring all of that inside Vantage. And then finally operationalize that data sets. The main value there is that you don't have to worry about dragging the data out, creating multiple silos of the data science environments, keep them in sync and refreshed, and worry about security and vulnerabilities. Now, through that common data set that sits inside a data lake, you'll be able to run your production environment on it, and you can do your data science operations on that data. Another important element, and, and Duke will talk about that much in much more detail, is our integration with SageMaker. It is our ability to integrate with third-party tools, ISVs, as well as with SageMaker. So if data scientists were to come to Vantage and curate the data on Vantage, then they can, they can build and train their models on SageMaker. And then we have built APIs and connectivities where you can take that model and import that back into Vantage and operationalize that model on Vantage without moving any data. And that is a very important part of a data science journey to help you modernize the stack around analytics. Finally, all this thing comes together because we've been working with AWS on integrating with a lot of cloud native services around data, around infrastructure, around security, and around analytics. All the way from the left, where you have got the sensor data, machine learning, IoT data, getting through the glue and understanding the context behind that data, creating those Lambda functions so when your data changes, you are notified immediately. Having those connectors into Kafka and Kinesis so you can go from batch to streaming, 
IoT sensor data landing on a data lake and understanding the CSV, Parquet, JSON formats, taking some of that data and putting it into the object file system to make it much more performant, are all parts of the integration that we have recently done with AWS on Vantage Cloud products. What's the net net of this? Net net of this is that now you can run on the same multi-cluster environment, your production IT workloads to departmental workload, any workload around test dev and fire drill that needs that compute isolation, but you still have to act on the same data that sits on a data lake with storage compute separation. And finally, your analytics innovation, the data science workloads with all the machine learning functions that are built inside Vantage to help you modernize that stack. NetNet, those are the three main important pillars of modernization that we espouse. We've got a lot of different design uh, paradigms that are built around these three pillars of modernization that we espouse to our customers. But one of the things that we really want to talk about is what Charter has done with the modernization journey that they've taken on. And so for that, I'd like to welcome Peter Singler. And Peter will walk us through his journey at Charter on how he went from on-prem to cloud and modernized their stack. Thank you, Ashish. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. I am Peter Singla with Charter Communication. Today, we will go through our journey to a modern cloud architecture. So here are the some points that I will discuss today. First, I will describe our starting point at the beginning of our journey. Then I will discuss our approach to evaluate and measure the present state workload and using those metrics to build the future state. At the end of the presentation, I will conclude many modernized analytic capability that we gain as a result of this journey. <clears throat> Let's look on our mission statement. Our goal is to provide an analytic platform for pervasive data intelligence to meet the business requirement through innovative and cost-effective solutions. Let's look at where our journey begins. In our data center, we have hosted the 32800 Vantage system. Our production system is in Charlotte data center and our development and user acceptance testing in Greenville Data Center. We have variety of BI analytics tools along with some traditional data integration tools. Our business continuity is based on backup and restore process that put our RTO from weeks to month. Our on-premises architecture is based on capacity pricing model and our 2800 hardware is near the end of life. So we look to the future state and the advanced analytic capability and workload management at economic saving to propel our journey to the cloud. Let's look our journey to the cloud. In the preparation of our journey to the cloud, the first thing we conduct a data analytics on our existing 2800 platform. We measured and forecast the consumption of resources for the existing workload and using those metrics to build the future state. We measured the variance of data storage, which is used as a reference point of storage on the cloud. We measured the consumption of logical I.O., which is the driver of Vente unit that help us to predict the future cost on the cloud. At the last, we measured the applications ingress and egress costs connecting to the Vente system. So here is our modern cloud architecture that Teradata help us to put together, where we provision our production system in one availability zone of US East region, and our development and user acceptance testing in the another availability zone of US East region We extended our ecosystem using native object store that help us to read or write the data on S3 object storage. 
We further extended our ecosystem using query grid fabric that allow us to share the data across three Teradata systems as well as Oracle and Hadoop without moving the actual data. Our modern cloud architecture is pricing based model. It's an it's a elastic based model and based on that consumption, we will calculate the cost for the utilization. Let's look at our migration approach. So our journey to the cloud consists of migrating the three system, beginning from development, followed by UAT, and then production system, and accumulating 310 terabyte of data to the cloud. We use the hybrid approach, combining backup and restore process along with data mover tool. All the three system migrations spread across the six month period of time and follow the similar pattern. So you can see here is the timeline for the production migration. Our production migration started with the backup and restore process that help us to migrate the static data. Then we use the data mover tool to migrate the delta incremental data for the larger tables as well as the non-BI data. The important point is while we're moving this data to the cloud, our business customer continue using the system and loading the new data. In the final phase, we migrate the delta of 100 terabyte to the cloud. The cloud architecture and planning services help us to finalize this approach and to establish the network connectivity that help us to reduce overall outage less than four hours for production system. The impact to the business customer is very minimal. Teradata also implement the business utilization console tool that help us to track the Vantage unit for each business group on the cloud. So as we know, on the cloud, our cost is based on the consumption of resources, and the need of elastic resource allocation is provided by Teradata dynamic workload management solution. Teradata provision the enough resources for the first year of the growth. Using this workload management, we can prioritize the resources for the workload that need the resources first before the other workload. We can also increase the proportion of resources in the SLG tier for the important queries that need to run faster. And those queries will consume the Vantage unit faster, but it will consume the same number of Vantage unit. So the cost will remain same. Additionally, we can apply the rules using the workload management that will help us to, based on the optimizer execution plan, to filter out the queries that are bad on the system and save the overall cost on the cloud system. So here are the some key lessons learned during our journey to the cloud. Our 2800 system does not require a fallback. So while we are calculating the consumption of resources in terms of Vantage unit, we did not include the step for logical I.O. that involve in writing the data on the fallback amp. So what happened? After the migration of the first month, we see increase in the Vente unit compared to on-prem. We work with the Teradata vendor. We did some test run on some sample queries and find that Vente unit consumed by fallback is less than 1%, but our research is still continue with the Teradata vendor. We have the other learning lesson of database permanent space was doubled due to the fallback enabled on the cloud. We have the another learning lesson that is Teradata parallel transporter utility performance issue from on-premises to the cloud. So our application systems are still hosted on-premises and our Vente system is in the cloud. While we are sending the data from on-premises to the cloud, we encounter a performance issue. What we learn? We learn the physical distance increase between on-premises to the cloud, and due to that, network latency also increase. 
To overcome this situation, we increase the TPT buffer size from 8 MB to 16 MB. So now we are in the modern cloud architecture. In the modern cloud architecture, our first exposure was native object store that allow us to query engage the S3 object storage, not only with the AWS, but also with the other cloud providers. And it's a highly scalable, and you can use the multiple data formats like JSON, CSV, Parquet. Using native object store, you can also share the data, exchange the data with the non-Teradata applications and the other cloud providers. In our modern cloud architecture, we are exploring the machine learning and data science features that will help us to accommodate some important event and journey analytics. In the current database version on the cloud, we have a bunch of machine learning functions such as NPath, linear regression, feature engineering, and transformation. In the future version, we will explore the clearscape analytics that will help us to build the forecasting models that can share outside the Vantage system. So all these new analytic functions help us to accommodate some of the important use case within the charter. One is modeling baseline for daily truck rolls and trouble calls, as well as repeat calls per subscriber. Path and pattern analyze of customer experience. Predicting subscription cancellation and downgrades. Our modern architecture is now ready to deliver the location intelligence that uses the Teradata geospatial feature along with time series support that help us to generate a four dimension analytic view of the customer. We will be examining the integration of additional data sources that will help us to reveal the environmental impact to our customer. We can identify the peak volume of the activity in a geospatial location for a period of time using time series bucketing. We can also generate the tessellation grades in various regions that will help us to identify the candidate for 5G network services. So now we arrived into the modern cloud architecture and our journey continued to explore the other Vantage features and to evolve the modern cloud architecture into the future. So here are the final key takeaways. Now I leave you having the starting point where we, our journey starts and then how we examine our approach to evaluate and measure the present state workload and using those metrics to build the future state and then how we arrived into the modern cloud architecture and the adoption of the new analytic capability that we gain as a result of this journey. Thank you, everyone. I'm going to hand over to Ashish. So that was one of the many examples of how a customer goes through a journey with Teradata Advantage all the way from on-prem into cloud, much more seamlessly, right, with very little to no outage to the business users who are continuing to use the on-prem system while the migration is happening to the cloud. Once you journey to the cloud, you've got a chance to modernize that stack, use more of the native object store, query grid capabilities to bind more data together, and then eventually get into a state where you can start to use some of the machine learning functions and blur the boundaries between the classic data warehousing and BI reporting to machine learning analytics for your data scientists, scientists. And so this is also made possible because of our partnership and cloud native integrations into AWS. So let me invite on the stage Doug from AWS to talk about the work that Teradata and AWS have done for the massively cloud native architecture. Thank you, Thank you Ashish. Hi. My name is Duke Mbaya. I'm a partner solutions architect at AWS. And I closely work with Teradata in terms of integrating both of our services. 
And today, I'm just mostly going to discuss architecture with you. Um, and I'm going to discuss it in a context of data gravity and in a context of uh, time to value. Uh, let's start with data gravity. So we are building the services and we are bringing them closer to the data. So in a nutshell, what, what is data gravity? So the concept of data gravity suggests that businesses tend to bring their application closer to where the data resides. That's been going on for a while now. But the most important thing is, how is Teradata and AWS are reacting to that data gravity? And the way we react to it is that we are also building purpose-built data services and bringing them closer to your data and closely integrating it with your data, building them with your data in mind. And so that closer integration with the AWS data lake, and in addition to that, we design those services to solve your specific use case. We talk to you, our customers, and ask you, what do you want? What is it that would make your life easier or your ability to process your data more efficiently? And then we go ahead and build those services. A clear example in terms of machine learning, for example, uh, we have um, Teradata ClearScape, which is an analytic with machine learning function that resides inside your data warehouse. And then in addition to that, we have SageMaker integration through APIs that allows you to run inference within Teradata directly. And so the process that we use to build the, 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 those data services is listening to your challenges um, and then understanding who are the stakeholders who are interacting with the data. And then once we know what's going on, what you need, and who's interacting the data, then we design those specific services for, for you to solve your specific use case. And we focus on three pillar scalability. We want to make sure that whatever use case that you have, we can handle it. And so whether it's one gigabyte of data or several petabytes of data, we want to make sure that we can scale up and down so that you don't have to worry about it. And then the second pillar is towards democratization. We want everyone from your data analyst to do your data engineer to have access to the data and to be able to influence the data outcome, the data format, the data shape. And, and so what we do is we then build a diverse set of services that solve different use cases. An example of it, for example, speaking of democratization, is our service that we call AWS, data, AWS Glue Data Brew. What the service is, is really an ETL service. It allows you to transform your data, but then you don't need any coding to be able to transform your data. You just have access to a UI, and that UI essentially allows you to specify the state of your data. And then, we are lowering the bar of entry in terms of data management, data transformation. You can essentially have your data analyst go into the UI and specify the state that the data needs to be when it reaches the data store, and then push that configuration. And every time your data traverses your data pipeline, it's incrementally changed to the, the final state that's needed. So the goal really for all of this is time to value. And by time to value, we mean reducing the time it takes between when your data is created and when you extract intelligence out of it. And so shrinking that, data, that, that time between events, when an event is happening, and when you are able to react to it. So, let me discuss time to value in a context of an architecture. I'm bringing back this uh, uh, design that you've seen earlier. And essentially, this design shows you the, the diverse ecosystem of services that integrates with Teradata once you've migrated your 
platform to, to AWS. Teradata customers who are migrating the platform to AWS, as soon as they're done migrating, they have access to a diverse set of tools that enhances their ability to reduce time between when they, they get the data and between when they can extract value out of it. I talked earlier about data gravity, and you can see in this design that Teradata is the center of the chart, of the, the layout. That's the gravity that I was referring to because then we start building services around Teradata, closely integrating it with Teradata, especially the machine learning APIs. But it reduces the time between when you have to, you get your data and then when you start using your machine learning for inference. Because remember, you spend about 80% of your time cleaning the data, running an ETL. That's a lot of time just to clean the data, and we're trying to shrink that. And so I want to bring your attention to another uh, factor in this design. It's our streaming services. So we take our streaming services, and they're serverless. So you don't have to manage infrastructure. You just connect your data and then do transformation. Then we connect it to our ETL, uh, uh, services. And so what you have is that you can do ETL in real time. As your data is traversing the pipeline, you're doing ETL and then loading it into your data store. And so that's a very, very, very interesting concept because traditional ETL is batch. You, you, you have a schedule. You do it on a schedule, whether it's a few hours or, or, or a day. But with data streaming, you start really responding to real-time events or near real-time events, whether you are a bank that wants to detect fraud or whether you are a social media that's trying to do content moderation. You don't want to wait eight hours before taking down a bad content or detecting fraud. And so increasingly, we see Teradata users, Teradata customers, and AWS customers together leveraging the streaming ETL combination to be able to reduce the time when an event happens and when they can either react to it or extract intelligence out of it. Um, so with this concept, really, the data is traversing. And as it's traversing, you are applying your ETL. And I talked about Glue Data Brew, where your data analyst can do it. And so it's not just your data engineer who can code, but also your data analyst who doesn't have time to code, but who knows how the data has to be for the analytics to work properly. And so in real time, you're feeding your Teradata with clean data directly, ready for machine learning. And with this concept, your machine learning, uh, your, your data platform became, becomes aware of your, 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 your machine learning diet. If you remember, uh, machine learning has a specific diet. It likes to see the data. And then so you transform your data such that by the time it reaches your data store, it's already in the feature state that you need it to be able to start running inference. I'm going to talk about another uh, layout. This is a, just a different layout showing the same thing, but here I'm showing the, the, the life cycle of your data from when the data is collected, generated, to when it's stored and when you apply machine learning. And to the far side of the chart, you see the combined power of Teradata and AWS. You look at Teradata ClearScape Analytics within database uh, analytics. It gives you the power to run inference on millions of row with just millisecond latencies. In addition to that, you can use the power of Amazon SageMaker using the API integration, so you don't even have to leave Teradata. You can just run a query, and in that query specify, go run inference on SageMaker, and it does it for you. And so, both Teradata and AWS are investing a lot of time listening to customer and then coming up with tight integration to make your life easier, but then more important, to reduce the time it takes for you 
to get to the intelligence that you need for your business. So thank you very much. As a partner solutions architect at AWS, I'm the primary point of contact to, to respond to AWS questions. And one of the questions I get is, uh, I have to write it on-prem, I have to migrate it to the cloud. Uh, um, uh, is it the right choice to stay with Teradata? Then I get to talk to them about this ability to be able to run you know, inference on millions of rows. I get to tell, talk about uh, uh, the ability to decouple storage and compute. And then it just makes the conversation easier. So I wanted to share this with you. Thank you very much uh, for the time today.